think that they try to be on their best behaviour. You would have thought so. But, you know, you, we've seen this before, haven't we, when a party's been in office for a long time and standards just begin to deteriorate. And I think they take their position pretty much for granted. So we've had a spate of these allegations, a spate of resignations, and, of course, including, famously, the Prime Minister breaking his own lockdown rules. And, mm. you know, some would say that, you know, a fish rots from its head. And if the Prime Minister is unable to adhere to the very laws that he introduced himself, which were so damaging to the country, how can you expect other MPs to uphold standards? And, you know, what's slightly surprising to me is, I was speaking to Alan before we came on. We don't actually know what Pincher did, whether it was as simple as pinching or whether it was slightly more serious than that. But assuming it was serious enough for him to have the whip removed... Mm. <laughs> um... so I see what's going on here, everyone. It's getting I see more exciting it. now. Yes, yeah. I see it. The energy levels are rising in the studio, I can tell you that. But uh... assuming it was serious enough to have the whip removed, really, he should resign, shouldn't he, as an MP? It, it, it's kind of binary in my mind. Either you're guilty of doing something quite serious, in which case you should just go from public office, or you're not, in which case you should continue. I, I, I can't see how this kind of intermediate position of having the whip removed and, um, a, a, and losing your office uh, solves the problem. No, I think, I think that the, the Conservative Party is too complacent, too stuck in its ways. It's had 12 years in office and it needs a good kick in the backside.